Okay, welcome everybody and thank you for being here with us today. Um, we are very happy here at the Garfield Libraries to welcome Jessica Barnum to do a reading of one of her books, Frolicky Foot Free. The, the book has a great story and I'll let her take care of most of it. Um, if you just allow me a minute to share my screen, I will take us through a brief introduction and a little housekeeping for our Zoom meeting. Today we are looking into Frolicky Foot Free. Frolicky Foot Free is an autobiographical poem written and illustrated by a niece aunt duo. It is about a cardinal that experiences a pause point in life snag right in the midst of her frolicky flow. A metaphor for how the illustrator is enduring the aftermath intricacies of a stroke. The themes of fear, faith, hope, resilience, patience, perseverance, forgiveness, humor, connection, and grace resonate inside and outside of the poem. A little bit about our author before we begin. Jessica Barnum is a full-time intuitive life coach and writer. She has been a public and private school teacher and coach, English, language arts, reading, wellness, and cycling for 26 years in both Vermont and Colorado, serving ages ranging from pre-K to 12th graders. She has published two children's books and is currently drafting more um, and writes poetry every day. She has offered numerous reading, writing, and wellness workshops at libraries over the years. Her intuitive life coaching helps people access and strengthen their intuition to bring clarity, creative expression, and purpose to their lives. Some of her techniques include the intuitive art drawing method, moonology, nature yoga and meditation, intuitive writing, Reiki and animal Reiki. She offers solo sessions and group gatherings for clients of all ages. She is an avid cyclist and loves to garden, adventure in the wilderness and spend time with her friends and family. This is a Zoom webinar. You have two options of communicating with us. You can use the chat to add a quick comment or to let me know if you have any technical issues with the Zoom, I will try to help you as much as I can, as quickly as I can. If you do have any questions for our author, for Jessica, it is preferable that you use the Q&A. This will save the questions so that we can revisit them at a later time in our presentation. Again, if you have any questions during any of our presentation, feel free to reach out to me through the chat. Thank you and let's begin. Jessica, whenever you let me know you're ready, I will go ahead and share our book. Thank you, Alex. It's wonderful to be here, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Yes, and as Alex shared, I have written a book called Frolicky Foot Free, and my aunt, Grace Barnum, illustrated it. And I just want to share what's fascinating about this is she endured a stroke and was told she would be very limited um, in the aftermath with her physical abilities. She had never painted prior to her stroke. And so what was magical about this story is she was determined, the will of spirit is so powerful to bounce back resilience from the stroke. But with that, she was felt this compulsion to start painting. So we got talking. And I said, how would you feel about sharing your story through literature? I'd love to write. And how would you feel about sharing some of your, your paintings? And at first she thought, oh, I don't know about that. It would be so public. And she reached out with some time and said, let's do it. So this is a representation of us coming together and really celebrating her resilience and her um, willingness to share her story with other people who have perhaps had times in their life, incidences in their life, whether it's a stroke or where they felt stuck. That's how she described it, is, is feeling quite stuck after having lived a very flowy, rhythmic life. 
So before I do read this, I'd like to share, and before Alex posts the uh, PDF version of the book on the Zoom, I would like you to think about a cardinal, the bird, that bright red male, the plumes, the feathers so bright. I'll share a version of the cardinal on this pillow that my parents just gave me. And it's interesting, we don't see, I don't see them in Colorado much, but when I lived in Vermont, we saw them all the time. So just closing your eyes, envisioning your recognition of the cardinal bird, if you've seen it in a picture or on a video, or if you've seen it in real time, in real life, in the, in the wilderness. And then bring to your vision, the female. The female is more of a tan color and it has the orange beak. And often you'll see the male and the female flitting around together. Just embody that feeling of the, the colors, the, the union of a pair of cardinals and their presence in, in nature. And I'm asking you to do this because that is what uh, Grace, my aunt Grace and I experienced when we wrote this book. We, we just, uh, she chose the cardinal as a metaphor for her journey. One, because she loves the bird, but two, it, it really is a magical bird, very connected to love and ancestral energy and resilience. And the other thing I'd like you to think about is if you've ever um, experienced a time when you have been stuck. And when we think about being stuck, we think about physical. It could have been a physical illness, a physical injury, a physical ailment of some sort where your life suddenly had a different, it was compromised. It could also be a mental stuckness. You had a flow of thought and then something happened where you had a change of heart or a change of mind, or you started to see something in life differently. And that connects to emotional stuckness, right? Your feeling of everything's fine and life's great. And then suddenly something happened and Oh, I feel this, this, something different in my heart now. It could be a heaviness. It could be um, just questioning or doubt or a searching for hope, whatever, whatever it is. So just take a moment to think about a time when maybe you felt quite stuck in your life. And I would love to sit here and just relish the moments of silence thinking about that. You can do that on your own time, anytime. You can also, because we're recording this, repeat, um, replay this Zoom and give yourself that reflection time about when you were stuck. And so with stuckness, here we have manifested a book together to celebrate how when we get stuck, we can get unstuck. That the momentum of life and faith and hope and resilience and love and belief and forgiveness and perseverance all come in to help us recognize what stuck feels like. Give us a big hug as we embrace, oh, I'm stuck. And allowing that to melt away so we can become unstuck and find a flow again. So in a way, being stuck is part of a flow. A little bit of irony there. I'm stuck in a flow. Okay. <sighs> I'm very excited to read this book to you today. I have decided to read it twice. It is um, short. It is a tetrameter poem. So I'm going to read it twice because with poetry, we read poetry on many levels. And two of the biggest uh, levels I read poetry on is, is I read the poem for meaning. I delve into each line and extract what is powerful in heart and head, right? What, what resonates? The second is the pulse of the poem, the rhythm. If there's rhyme, if there's alliteration, if there's personification, um, some of those literary techniques and elements we sneak into poetry that, um, and the vibration, 
So, you know, it's almost like a drumbeat. We feel the poetry in the essence of who we are. So yes, the first reading, I'd like you to listen for the meaning. And the following themes have, are in the poem and you can listen for examples of some of them. So if you have a piece of paper right now, you can write these themes down or just feel them, feel them come to you as they do as I'm reading the poem this first time. So the themes that Grace and I intentionally, that really came out in her experience, that came out in the poem and in her illustrations are as follows. Fear. Faith. Hope. Resilience. Patience. Perseverance. Forgiveness, humor, connection, creativity, grace, that's my aunt's name, but it's also this beautiful noun and verb, grace and love. Thank you, Alex. You may pull up the story online on the Zoom so people can see it as I read it. Frolicky Foot Free. Me, Jessica Barnum, wrote it, and the illustrator is my aunt, Grace, and we published it with Lulu Press Incorporated. Next page. Next page. Sunlit blues, purples and reds, birds puttering in wild berry beds, vine to vine, wings fluttering in flight, Beaks uttering ditties of delight. Next page. Fluttering frozen, a frolicky foot chosen, a sassy snag flying to lag. Tangling in a swirly twirly vine, fretful and fruitless, trying to untwine a tottering tweedling squirming bird fire of spirit blazed and stirred awaiting a sign a song or a rhyme stillness of time and silence no chirp or chime Sun settling on horizon's glade, moon nestling on evening's shade, a wiggling foot and a jiggling vine, startled and stumped in the chill of night. Weepy eyes and sleepy wings, wondering what darkness brings. The vigilance of stars dotting skies expanse, earthly sounds propelling prayers to prance, endurance of wiggling and jiggling galore, soaring faith on halo's shore. Whispering chirps to the wildness of waiting, being stuck is irritating. Witty and wise in wily pursuit, tenacious will taking root, hopping, hoping, no pause to ponder, bound in courage for wilderness yonder. Then in the fiery solace of breathing, love's rhapsody softening grieving, 
thickets rustling brawn and believing, crickets chirping a cheery trace, branches extending to embrace, roots granting a tender pace, the forest chanting a tale to brace, go with grace. A wiggling foot and a jiggling vine, this time to intertwine with a saintly sign, a soul to align. Tuning tall, tweeting a call of love for the vine with moonlit shine. Jitters dwindling, grit rekindling, beholding grace, emboldening the place where a bird sings and spreads her wings pulsing in the presence of her story. Aspiring heart to fly forth shortly. Moon settling on horizon's shade, sun nestling on dawn's glade, light splintering the gloom of gray, a fluttering frenzy awakening the day, Flocks of birds arriving this way, ignoring berries, no time for play, flapping feathers with this to say, swirly twirly vine, away, away. Birds swoop swinging, beaks clutch clinging, stubborn vine ringing, stuck birds singing, may this vine go swinging slinging, birds robustly singing, beaks justly clinging, stubborn vine releasing its clasp, stuck bird heaving a grateful gasp. It's life I grasp, may I fly at last. Frolicky foot freeing in flow, stubborn vine agreeing to forego. Tis time to ebb and fall to earth's floor. So goes the bird flying to explore onward journey of yearning and yore. Sun rays sailing in sync with song, unstuck bird gracing along. That is the end of our tetrameter poem, Frolicky Foot Free. Thank you, Alex. I think I'll have you come back to the screen where we can see you. Yep, see you as well. So at this time, I'd like you to pause and think about what your favorite part was in the story, the poem. Maybe it was a certain line a certain image that came to mind, a feeling of one of the themes I mentioned. So just close your eyes if you'd like. You can have your hand to your heart. I do that sometimes just to check in. Take pause to reflect. Okay, and I want to at this point say that it's fun to read this over and over again, the poem, poems, right? Reading them over and over again, especially for meaning. So I'm feeling, I'm, I know that you're out there listening, but at any time you want to really connect more deeply with this book, it is at all the libraries, and you can also reach out to me for a copy. There is a lot in it that uh, you might want to come back to. So thank you for thinking and reflecting. The second reading, I'd like to focus on the beat, the rhythm, the pulse, the frequency, like I mentioned earlier. So a tetrameter, the definition of a tetrameter poem is a pulse of four, I call it. So different than syllables in 
like a word such as cardinal, cardinal, three syllables, right? When you take a line of tetrameter poetry, there's a, there is this rhythm, a metrical foot, it's called, of four beats. So, for example, um, Alex, why don't you pull up that first page? And I'll, I'll, I'll encourage you to snap your fingers with me, or you could tap your foot. So, yeah, you want to pull up that first page. When you look at a tetrameter poem, you could have six to 12 words on a line, but it reads with a pulse of four. And so it's not, again, like the syllables or how many words there are, how many syllables there are, it's how it's read. So for example, here we go. I'll read the first four lines and I'll snap it out. Sunlit blues, purples and reds. Right, I feel like that drum beat. Birds puttering in wild berry beds. So you'll notice my pace changes a little bit too. Vine to vine, wings fluttering in flight. So again, I'm only, it's four beats. Beaks uttering ditties in delight. So this takes practice. If you've never, if you never knew about tetrameter poetry before or that pulse of four, Take a picture right now of your on your phone. Go for it. Take a picture of those four lines <laughs> and practice that beat. And if you're a writer or you've ever written something, a journal or even a sentence like this morning, I had cereal for breakfast. Try to chunk it out into a pulse of four. And use your snapping or your your feet. I'm actually doing both my foot and my and my and my fingers. So I'm gonna read this again with the pulse of four. And you're watching this, you might be in the comfort of your own home. Feel free to out loud, say it with me and feel the beat. And you might notice too, even though the first reading was for the content, the meaning, that the pulse brings out more meaning. It brings out more resonance and energy and you might have some new ahas about wow that line has a whole new meaning now that i've pulsed it to the beat of four so just observe recognize be aware of what comes to you and what's fun about poetry is there's no wrong way there's no wrong way to read it there's no wrong way to analyze decode and annotate whatever is meaningful for you is what the poem is meant to be for you okay so I've just read that first page. So Alex, feel free to go to the next page. And again, on your comfort of your own home, feel free to snap along with me. Fluttering frozen, a frolicky foot chosen, a sassy snag flying to lag, tangling in a swirly, twirly vine, fretful and fruitless, trying to untwine. A tottering, tweedling, squirming bird, fire of spirit, blazed and stirred, awaiting a sign, a song, or a rhyme, stillness of time, just two there, and silence, no chirp or chime. So that line, you'll notice. I snapped without saying anything because it was part of that beat. The pause can be a beat. Next. Sun settling on horizon's glade, moon nestling on evening's shade, a wiggling foot and a jiggling vine, startled and stumped in the chill of night. Weepy eyes and sleepy wings, wondering what darkness brings. The vigilance of stars, dotting skies expanse, earthly sounds propelling prayers to prance, endurance of wiggling and jiggling galore, soaring faith on halo's shore. I can see Alex going like this, <laughs> shaking his head. I can't help it either, right? Whispering chirps to the wildness of waiting, being stuck is irritating. 
dictating, witty and wise and wily pursuit, tenacious will taking root, hopping, hoping, no pause to ponder, bound in courage for wilderness yonder. Then in the fiery solace of breathing, love's rhapsody softening, grieving, thickets rustling, brawn and believing, crickets chirruping a cheery trace, branches extending to embrace, roots granting a tender pace, the forest chanting a tale to embrace, go with grace. Three. I did the syllables for that one. Go with grace. There we go. Two. My finger's getting a little numb. <laughs> a wiggling foot and a jiggling vine. This time to intertwine with a saintly sign, a soul to align. So now it goes to two. Tuning tall, tweeting a call of love for the vine with moonlit shine. Jitters dwindling, grit rekindling, beholding grace emboldening the place where a bird sings and spreads her wings. Back to four. Pulsing in the presence of her story, aspiring heart to fly forth shortly. Moon settling on horizon's shade, Sun nestling on dawn's glade, light splintering the gloom of gray, a fluttering frenzy awakening the day, flocks of birds arriving this way, ignoring berries, no time for play, flapping feathers with this to say, swirly, twirly, vine away, away, swirly, twirly, Swirly, twirly, vine, away, away. There we go. <laughs> Bird swoops swinging, so back to two. Bird swoops swinging, beaks clutch clinging, stubborn vine ringing, stuck bird singing. May this vine go slinging. <laughs> That's a little forced. You'll notice that when you're writing or sometimes it's a little push depending on your pace. Birds robustly singing, beaks justly clinging, stubborn vine releasing its clasp, back to four. Stuck bird heaving, a grateful gasp. It's life I grasp, may I fly at last. Frolicky foot freeing in flow, stubborn vine agreeing to forego. Tis time to ebb and fall to earth's floor. That is the one line I'll admit as an author right now, I really struggled with, right? As writers, oh, lots of editing. Maybe you can help me with that in the comfort of your home. Tis time to ebb and fall to earth's floor. It's like three. Tis time to ebb and fall to earth's floor. Tis time to ebb and fall to earth's floor. Can't quite get it. So you can reach out to me if you have some uh, advice about that one line, it's that one line in this whole poem. So goes the bird flying to explore, onward journey of yearning and yore, sun rays sailing in sync with song, unstuck bird gracing along. Thank you, fingers. <laughs> Okay, so shake your hands out if you're just snapping or just massage your foot if you're tapping. Take a nice deep breath. <sighs> Feel that pulse of poetry in your body, in your heart. Knowing you can come to this anytime, you can practice this, you can, it's really a meditation. It's really about, you know, there's all this talk about mindfulness and self-care and how to be well. And poetry is an example of meditation. It's a form of medicine really. And my aunt Grace speaks to that. This book really is a, is a symbol of, of that. So whether you're reading it for content or the pulse, it brings you right into the moment. And then you get to, just, you get to 
observe what does it do for you mentally, emotionally, physically, could be spiritually too, philosophically, ethically, anything. Thank you for listening. <sighs> so with that said, we have some time here to reflect. And again, you can come back to this recording. And if you, needed, if you need more time than what we're giving you during this recording, please honor that. The themes of fear and I'll read the list again. I know you wrote it down, but the fear, faith, hope, resilience, patience, perseverance, forgiveness, humor, being stuck is irritating. That was a <laughs> humor line. Connection, creativity, and grace, and love. So you wrote those down in your journal or wherever you wrote them down. Circle the ones that really stood out for you. And then if there's any others, themes that came to you, words or phrases that came to you, write those down as well. Just take a moment. Okay, so Alex, if you pull up the last few pages of the book, uh, what I love to do with my books is put some creative prompts at the back because often we read a book and we close it and it goes on the shelf. And I'm a fan of the reflective cre creative process in the aftermath. And sometimes being given a prompt can spark even more meaning from the story and um, yeah, bringing it into your life a little more deeply. So I'll read this to you. And while I'm reading this to you, um, I want you to think about what creativity is, because this is really about creative expression, just like this book is a symbol of how Grace and I, my aunt Grace and I, um, accessed creativity to bring meaning and healing for her. This was healing. Again, I mentioned the word meditation. This was a meditation in the process. It's meditative reading it, but it's really a symbol too of her healing process. And yeah. So creativity is the essence of this. So I wanna share that creativity is never right or wrong when it comes from your heart. So I'm going to say that again, and I'd like you to say that to yourself out loud if you choose to. Creativity is never right or wrong when it comes from your heart. And what comes with that is a great, a great form of self-trust that what you're creating, whether it's a form of art or a thought, anything you're manifesting, if it's coming from your heart and it feels so good, then that is your story. That is your healing. That is your meditation. That's what you're bringing to the world. And we do have those moments. I'll admit in the creative process, I had doubt at times. I was definitely like, this is my creativity and grace too. We were both like, but I don't know what we're doing, but how how I love sharing that vulnerability right now with you because we are all creative beings. We are all manifestors of our life and what we believe in and trust. And the self-doubt is part of it. We get to look at the doubt and go, or, or the, the, the thoughts like, oh, that's not right. Oh, that, I did it wrong. And go, oh, well, hello, thoughts. I'm, I appreciate you coming to the surface of my conscience, but guess what? I'm going to just take you softly and put you over here because you know deep down those thoughts aren't serving you, right? And when we, we embrace them with grace and we shelf them, then we have all this openness to be like, okay, creativity, let's get to it and just, just go for it. Trust what comes to you. So with that said... I'll, I'll read um, our letter and our 
creative prompts that we created for you. Frolicky foot free thinking. <laughs> and now that I'm seeing that, I often think I, I wish I'd put creating, but it is thinking. It's also receiving and creating, and creating. Dear readers, we had a lot of fun being creative together when making our book. Creativity is wondrous. And we invite you to reflect on and explore your own creativity. Think about how you like to be creative in various art forms. Being an artist is being creative in any way you'd like. Do you like to draw, paint, write, sculpt with clay, wood, metal, whatever it is, dance, sew, sing, play an instrument, arrange flowers and vases and gardens, make jewelry, and perhaps blend art forms together? What other art forms can you think of? So many. Just like we shared Aunt Grace's experience with a stroke as a cardinal in a poem with vibrant illustrations she drew, perhaps you'd like to ponder the prompts below and create the art forms of your choosing. Spark your artful self and have fun in your frolicky, frolicky flow. Our questions are based on the themes that are present in our book. And we encourage you to think of other themes and ideas you detected and create art based on them too. So what you wrote down earlier are circled, but then any other thoughts or phrases, themes that came to you, those are coming to you for a reason. It's almost like they're pay attention to me, do something with me. So the emergence of creativity, honor what comes up in, inside of you. You are the artist of your own creativity, so go for it. Have you ever felt fear? So again, I'll read through these, and if any of, any of them are like, ooh, 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 I want to play with that one. Have you ever felt fear? Did you embrace it or escape it? What is the story? Choose an art form and create what fear is to you. So Grace had a lot of fear in her story. She was scared, scared beyond measure when her life halted and doctors were telling her she would never recover. She would never speak, she would never move. And she, I will happily share in the fear zone right here that she is living independently, is painting, is writing, is reading, is speaking, is communicating, like beautifully. She is living a full, full abundant life. And in her words, um, yeah, rich and abundant because she believed. She embraced fear and decided it wasn't going to be crippling. It wasn't going to keep her stuck forever. So yeah, explore fear as you wish. Have you ever had faith in a situation, an idea in yourself or in someone else? Okay, so faith, whatever faith means to you, that could be philosophical, spiritual, religious. What, faith is such a beautiful word because it does this when we hear it, right? Whatever it means to you. What is the story around faith with you in, in a situation, idea, yourself or someone else? Choose an art form and create what faith is to you. Have you ever started a thought with, I hope? What is the story? Choose an art form and create what hope is to you. So the, the statement, I hope, is so powerful. And yeah, finish the sentence. Finish what that means. And it doesn't have to be words. It could be go, go mold something with clay. After you've been through a challenging situation, stuck in some way, have you ever experienced resilience? The blue, we are blueprint for healing and resilience. We bounce back. When we get a cut on our hand, it knows to heal and scab and regenerate. Our cells are magic for us. So with resilience, whether it's physical, mental, or emotional, or any type, uh, type of resilience, have you ever experienced that? Perhaps you had a thought such as, I made it through the challenge. I bounced back and I'm stronger and wiser than ever. What is the story? Choose an art form 
and create what resilience means to you. Has patience ever helped you get through a situation when you felt frustrated, confused, or scared? What is the story? Choose an art form and create what patience is to you. So in this book, the bird is caught in that vine and just like with Grace, she was stuck in her situation. Patience was huge. And that led to, Alex, you can go ahead to the next page, I think. I could be reading from the book as well. Thank you. And this leads, so sometimes that patience then stirs up perseverance. Have you ever been stuck and then perseverance helped you become unstuck? Like, I'm not gonna settle for this, I am determined. Perhaps you were stuck in a situation on a thought in your mind or with your body and you, perse you persevered with determination and motivation. What is the story? Choose an art form and create what perseverance is to you. And contemplate the power of thought and how thought influences our body. Mind and matter are connected. Have you ever experienced forgiveness when something happened to you? Perhaps at first you blamed the situation yourself, you blamed yourself or you blamed someone else. And then you decided to forgive. What is the story? Choose an art form and create what forgiveness is to you. And I will say right now that forgiveness was the theme Grace focused on the most in our creative process, writing our book. She said that was the hardest to do. And also in the aftermath, the easiest, because when she forgave, that's when the resilience actually was pulsing, kind of like the beat of this book. It started to like, the frequency got bigger and her healing was expanding. And then we have humor. Have you ever been in a serious situation when you felt the world caving in on you, right? The furrowed brow, burr, gripping, then humor stepped in and the lightness of laughter helped ease your head and heart. What is the story? Choose an art form and create what humor is to you. And what do you connect to within yourself and with the world? So you could spend a long time on this theme. How do you enrich those connections? So connection. Connection is like creativity. It comes in many forms. Think about the power of connection and how and why it thrives inside of yourself, as well as between you and other people, perhaps animals, nature, communities, and other examples you can think of. Think of all the ways you connect in a given day, in a given moment, connecting with your breath, connecting your senses, your sight. You see something move and it inspires you. Connection in any form. What is your story with connection? Choose an art form and create what connection is to you. And what does grace, graceful, gracious, all those derivatives, grace, grace, graceful, gracious mean to you? When have you experienced any of these? What is the story? Choose an art form and create what grace, graceful, gracious is to you. And lastly, as I had mentioned earlier about the cardinal, have you ever seen one? How did it act? So this is when you get to just meditate on this other being, this other, this bird, this beautiful bird. How did it act? Did it sound like it was saying, I'm red, 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 red. That's what cardinals do phonetically. I'm red, 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 red. Especially the male when it's flirting with the ladies. What is the story? Cardinal males are bright red and females are tan with an orange beak, like I shared earlier. They symbolize love, devotion, good fortune, and a connection to our loved ones and our past, present, and future. Choose an art form and create what a cardinal means to you. And be on the lookout. They might come to you in your dreams, in your daily daydreams. You might see one with artful love for you me, Jessica, and my Aunt Grace. Thank you. So with all of that, thank you, Alex, for sharing those pages. This is really that creative process is something to embrace on your own time and your own way. 
It can also be with other people. If you have a group of friends or family members, if you're a parent or a grandparent and you have children or you're around children, you could create an activity where you're sitting around and let's talk about hope or let's talk about humor, connection, and make it an activity where you're just being in the essence and the presence of the theme in a creative, in a creative way. So I am, I would love to hear your ideas. If anybody's on chat right now, or if you'd like to reach out to me with your ideas, I would love to hear what you actually, uh, what did resonate or what did manifest as a result of the inspiration from our book. And I, I'm certainly going to share that with my aunt as well. And um, yeah, Alex, can I, is there anything I'm forgetting to say or? Well, I, I just wanted to come up on, on your question. I, you know, your aunt used uh, the imagery of a bird and the vines. Is that directly connected to how she was feeling? You know, we, we tend to, to think of birds as creatures that fly and we see that as freedom. And, and the vines were present through most of the story. Uh, that's what called out to me, I think. It, it, do you think that that's what she felt like, her, her condition as, you know, being trapped in those vines? Yes. And that is the essence of the story. You know, when we first spoke and I, believe I asked her if you were to pick a metaphor for what it felt like to have had the stroke and then the stages in the aftermath and we're we're both connected deeply to nature and so I don't even I don't recall prompting a bird I think she just came she came out and said I, I just love the cardinal mm -hmm. and then you know how did it how how did it feel to be stuck and you know, you don't, we don't see birds getting stuck in the trees, but I can imagine it happens at times, right? <laughs> or, um, but yes, it was a, a metaphor and a symbol for how she felt, but also the, the situation, the circumstance of her life. She was, went from being able to drive, cook for herself, run errands to relying 100% on the hospital staff and then the residential facility where she was. And that was a big change, yeah. But she, her freedom of, her freedom of spirit was always there, right? So in essence, the birds and the, the feathers were always expanded. The feathers weren't stuck, right? It was the, the foot, yeah. Right. Thanks for asking that, thanks for asking that, Alex, yeah. And the idea of creativity and resilience, did this come to you because of your aunt wanting to write this book? I mean, what did you feel when, you know, what happened to her and, and she wanted to paint, she wanted to paint the story. Did you know it was her way of wanting to move forward? You know, what feelings did that bring you, you know, when, when you saw her in that willingness? Yeah, it's, I actually, I think I had a, personal, I'll admit, I was feeling a lot of grief for her. And I was also seeing her thriving. She had painted this painting of um, a field of sunflowers or da it was daisies. And I thought, look at what she is doing with this stuckness. She, she was epitomizing thriving within that you know, like you've, you're, you're stuck. So I remember asking her, it was simply a question of, would you want to share your story? Because I'm feeling this poem coming to me. And at first it was actually, it was prose. It was actually just sentences. And suddenly it, it took on a life of its own. It was suddenly coming out as lines of poetry. And then I said, and at first, I don't know if I can paint a cardinal. I don't know. And she had access to this art room and fortunately had some people bringing her some art supplies and um, it really, Alex, there was not, I would say there's, there was not a lot of intentionality. There was a, uh, of course some, 
but I think we just found ourselves almost being guided by the energy of it. You know, when you have an idea and it's like tapping at you, your conscience, your heart, and you're kind of like, you have to listen. You have like, almost like there's no choice. Suddenly we were, we were just living it. So right. that's how it came to be. Yeah. And it's such a great way, I think, to think about being stuck. And you brought that word as an important word, you know, throughout the story and throughout the prompts. But if you could go back to that and, and just go over what feeling stuck means just for people in general and how creativity, you know, can break that. And, you know, just the story of your aunt and the story in the book being just a great symbol for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stuck comes in a lot of forms. Um, you know, I think about the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. And how, I think we can all relate to suddenly our life flow, our frolicky free, our, our rhythm, our daily rhythm, our habits, our routines, our schedule, our desires, our being able to have access and exposure to what we wanted um, suddenly was limited. And so suddenly we're invited to oh, there's this great pause and it feels like a snag, kind of like a fish hook, like, and then, you know, as humans, we have to back up and assess, okay, how can I re-navigate my life now that I have these new boundaries and I'm feeling boxed in? And I think a lot of people can relate to having struggled with that, right? Suddenly we couldn't go out in the same way or do things that we were used to. And it impact, it impacts people's physical bodies, right? Like um, even just congestion of muscle achiness, you know, talking to my chiropractor, she's like, yeah, there's a lot of people coming in just because there's this physical restriction, but also emotional um, of feeling a loss of hope. Like, well, what's my life going to look like now? I, was used to doing that. And now what am I going to do? And with that said, Alex, that's where the creativity comes in is we are manifestors of our own life. We are deliberate creators. And we forget that resourcefulness inside of ourselves. that when we are stuck, we get to look at the situation and go, I see you, I'm reacting to you. And I get to try to see an opportunity in it. That's the hardest part is how do we see opportunity within being stuck? And we, but if that's all about, that's where the creativity comes in and goes, okay, I'm gonna get creative. Maybe I can't go, um, maybe I can't travel on a plane to go get married like I was supposed to last summer with the pandemic, but we can wait and we can still celebrate our love in a different way. And so when you're suppressed in one way, it's almost like, you know, the pressure pops up something else. You know, it's like the law of polarity, like you push down, something's going to come up. So that's where you're stuck. Creativity is going to pop up. It's just being willing and aware to see it and embrace it and be like, oh, what can I, what can I make? What can I do to feel good? Um, for myself and the, my, the people I love. Yeah. Does that answer your question? That does. It's a okay. great answer. And we have just a couple of minutes for, uh, you know, our last questions. Um, we were talking about you know, earlier, and I wanted to go back to it before we started our presentation. You mentioned, you know, going back to look at your writing. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what you meant there? Yeah, I love that. So right before this Zoom, everybody, I was looking at the book and I've you know, read it over the, it, we published it a year and a half ago. And I'm looking, I'm like, oh, I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, um, and it just makes me think that with creativity and when you're honoring the authenticity of what's emerging in you in a moment, what you create is a representation of who you are right in that moment, right? So as I'm looking back, 
I was like something deep inside of me emerged and brought to the surface this ability to rhyme and use alliteration in this way. And, it, you know, I, I can look and judge it. I can be like, what was I thinking? That sounds so weird. But instead, I'm choosing to look at it and go, huh, that's who I was right in that moment when it came out of me. And I think that's a big message for everybody is just honor that because we can easily look at what we've created and be like, what? Did I do that? Where? Who was I at that time? <laughs> just have some joy with it. And be like, oh, that's who I was. And it came out and it's now in the world. And it might inspire people or they might be like, oh, well, that I don't, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> like, it's just, it's about the manifestation. It's not about, you know, some expectation that it's supposed to be a certain thing. You know, I didn't have any expectations during this process with her. Um, which is why I'm able to look back at the writing and go, okay, that's, that's, that came out of me. It was like, you know, giving birth to a baby, I suppose. <laughs> so, yeah. That is such a good way to look at it because most of us have that, you know, we look at, you know, uh, the perfect example is we all wrote in high school. We all did art as children. And whenever we find, you know, some old notebook, you know, we kind of need your go, what, what was that? So I was really interested to see what your take on that was. And, and that's really good to, to, to see it for who we were at the time, as opposed to maybe criticizing it for who we are now. You know, it's, right. it's important. It but is important, yeah. This was really wonderful, Just um, I, I look forward to, to speaking with you again. I wanted to let people know that you will be back with us on Wednesday at 11. Um, yeah. through Zoom as well to, to read on a different book. But if you liked her today, please come back on Wednesday. And, you know, uh, you're a wonderful person to talk to. So I'm, I'm really happy we were able to host you today. Thank you for having me. I love this and love to all of you. And I wish you well on your creative journey. And when you get stuck, just know that you'll find a way to get unstuck. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect way to end it. Thank you so much, Jess. <laughs> Thank Everybody, you so much. Have a wonderful day. And um, yeah, just go out there and be creative, I suppose. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Be well.